So Abraham said to the rich man who died, do you remember how everything good happened to you when you were alive? Well now the tables are all turned and things are different now. May the words I speak become for you a word from God, from God who is the Father and Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. Well, good morning, everyone. What a story you just heard from the gospel. Lazarus and the rich man. Or the rich man and Lazarus. You do notice, by the way, that uh, Lazarus has a name and the rich man doesn't even have a name. <laughs> just the rich guy. Somebody told me, I think I heard in a sermon, that Lazarus means uh, the one, the one whom God helped. So the name means something on its own. One thing that's so stark about this story, one thing that's so uh, kind of uh, shocking is that the, good, the, the rich man, they didn't say he was a bad guy. And the poor guy, they didn't say he was a good guy. He wasn't like the, the poor guy who was, you know, noble in his distress and maybe he was a jerk, I don't know. It doesn't say anything about Lazarus, about his moral behavior. It doesn't say anything about his religious upbringing. It doesn't say anything about whether he went to church or went to synagogue or obeyed anything. It doesn't say anything about his character or what he did, religiously speaking. It just, all it says is he was a poor guy who lived outside the rich guy's house. On the other hand, the rich guy might have been a great guy. Maybe he was nice and kind and uh, was a hard-working businessman and came to all these wealth by uh, all of his good work. Doesn't say. Maybe he went to synagogue all the time. Maybe he went to temple and studied the Torah and obeyed all the laws. Maybe it does. You just don't know. The only thing you know about the rich man and the poor man is this. The rich man ignored the poor man. That's all it says. The poor guy lived at the rich man's gate and the rich guy didn't pay any attention to him. Which is always kind of funny because most of the time when we think of stories of the afterlife and Oh gosh, they're so complicated, but heaven and hell and limbo and what happens when you die. I saw a huge billboard. Where was this billboard? Somewhere around town this week. It said, um, suppose you were to die tonight, would you go to heaven or hell? And I guess <laughs> I, I had to laugh because on the bottom of the billboard it says, it, it lists out a, a telephone number to call. <laughs> call this number. And it says, uh, 2104 Truth. Like, if I ever I'm in doubt, I'll know who to call. <laughs> if ever I want to know. Suppose I called up and said, I'm not sure if I'm going to go to heaven or hell tonight, but I'm very rich and I don't pay much attention to the poor guys around me. What do you think? What's going to happen? Well, they said they knew the truth. Maybe they read Luke, Luke 16, 9. <laughs> anyway, I'm playing with you a little bit. It just The funny thing is that the only thing it says is, did the rich guy have compassion for the poor man? Did the rich man know the poor man? Did the rich man see the poor man? Did the rich man care about the poor man? That's it. And the answer is, he didn't know, and he didn't see very much. And he didn't care a whole lot. He did not have compassion. The rich man did not have compassion on the poor man. He knew his name, didn't he? Maybe it was a rich man's dog out there licking his sores. I don't know. He knew his name. He knew he was at the gate. But that was all he said. So to me, it's not so much a parable about and the details of heaven and hell and life after death 
It's more a story about this life, a story about whether we have compassion, and whether we know and see the people around us who are hurting. That's the main part of this parable. <laughs> to, to feel and to act with compassion uh, seems to be very important to Jesus and to this parable. I did wonder to myself, and I'm not sure it really applies, but I wonder if you could extend this parable to uh, larger spheres of influence besides the personal one besides just a one-on-one -on -one relationship between you and somebody else. I wondered if, if you could apply it to rich churches, and do the rich churches know how the other half lives in the poor churches? Or I wondered if rich, rich cities, if they knew or saw or had compassion on the other cities that are poor. Or rich school districts that have a lot of money. And do they have compassion on the poor school districts? Or if hmm, the rich people in your neighborhood, if they knew or saw and understood, had compassion on the poor neighbors right next to them. Hmm. Or if the rich diocese had compassion on those who are dioceses that were poor. So you could extend it a lot of different directions, couldn't you? And I'm not saying it, it needs to be applied all those ways, but I did wonder about it. It seems that the most important thing in this parable then is compassion and whether you know and see and then act compassionately to the people around us who are less fortunate. You notice it didn't even say that God gave that rich man all his riches. It just says, well, good things happen to you in your life and bad things happen to the other guy. It didn't say God was mad at Lazarus. It didn't say God was happy with the rich man. It just said, well, the way it worked out, the way it worked out, you had a lot of easy things and Lazarus had a lot of hard things. And you didn't pay much attention to the guy who didn't have a lot, a lot of things. Gosh, it's so stark, isn't it? It also reminds me a little bit of the parable at the back of Matthew chapter 28 about the sheep and the goats. See, I grew up in a pretty evangelical Episcopal church where like the only thing you had to do was like believe in Jesus for the forgiveness of your sins and then you go to heaven. And then when I read chapter 28 of Matthew, it doesn't say anything about faith in Jesus. It doesn't say anything about faith in God. It just says, did you help the people who were in prison? Did you help the people who were hungry? Did you help the people <laughs> who needed your help? And the person says, I didn't know who, who were they. I didn't even see them. So whenever you helped one of those people, you helped me. Oh, gosh, what about faith and believing the Nicene Creed or going to church? Gosh, it doesn't say any of that. <laughs> Just says, were you compassionate to the people who needed help around you? Hmm. Now, I don't want this sermon to devolve into a big debate about works and faith and grace and, you know, whether you can work your way to heaven. That's not the point, really. I just want to say when I look at those parables about uh, the sheep and the goats and the rich man and Lazarus, I just see that we're supposed to be uh, compassionate towards those around us whenever we can. The haves to the have-nots in whatever circumstance they find themselves in. The rich cities and the poor cities, the rich school districts and the poor school districts, maybe even the rich states, Texas is pretty rich, to the poor states like Mississippi or the rich kids in the youth group to the poor kids in the youth group, or the wealthy uh, folks in your company to the people who are not so wealthy. Whatever the situation is, there are people at our gate who are uh, looking to just have the crumbs off of our table. And it'd be really good if we did not overlook them. Because the parable says that someday the the tables will be turned and 
the worm will turn and you'll see the other side of the coin and we will know what the other side feels. We will know what the other people experience. Because you know when you go to heaven and you, that's when we say everyone's in union with each other. We're in communion with each other. We're in community with each other and with God. And it's one big happy get to know you. The problem is, if I get to know how the other half lived in heaven, and I know what, how much pain and suffering they went through, well, that's going to hurt. <laughs> because if I didn't learn it here, if I didn't pay attention here, if I didn't care here, well, I'm going to have to care there. And I'm going to have to know there. And I'm going to have to see there. You will be in union with people. So Jesus says, why not bring heaven to earth? Why not learn about how the other half lives here? Why not turn the other side over here? So that when you get to heaven, be no surprises. And hopefully when you get to heaven, no regrets. No surprises, no regrets. Everyone will know how the other half lives. The act of compassion is essential to us. May this sermon in some way become a word from God to you. God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The next part of the liturgy is to say together the Nicene Creed.